name is Alex, and I'm an educator here at the Science Center. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about habitats um, and metamorphosis or the life cycle of a couple of different butterfly species. Um, so to start off with, do you guys know what a habitat is? So a habitat is where a species lives um, and where it can get those resources from. So um, things that would in, uh, help make up a habitat would include a food source, a water source, space to reproduce and grow, um, air, or in the case of fish, it would obviously be they need water in order to go over those gills, um, and they need some sort of shelter. Um, so you even live in a habitat um, after this video. Um, I would recommend going around your house, seeing what you can identify as your habitat resources, where your food comes from, where you get your water, what exactly is that shelter that um, is over your head um, just to protect you from predators or something that would um, come and try to attack you. And so different species need different requirements in their habitats. So for example, a mouse would live in a much smaller habitat than a lion would. And I'm not just talking because of their size, where a mouse is this big and a lion's this big. If you think about it, a mouse only needs a small little cubby hole uh, a place to get their food and water and shelter. However, they don't need to travel over long distances. Um, whereas if you go to the zoo, you might see a lion or a tiger in their enclosures. Those enclosures are very large, but you still see the animal pacing back and forth. Uh, so in the, in the wild, these animals will travel great distances. Uh, so they need a lot of space in order to survive. Um, and whereas mice, just a tiny little space, making them feel nice and safe. Um, so if you also think of fish compared to land animals, um, we mentioned that the land animals will need some sort of air in order to breathe. Um, fish, because they don't need that air, they need the water to go over their gills, whereas land animals might have lungs that they can use to breathe in, all of that oxygen with. Fish do need some oxygen as well, but that's in their water source. They can't survive if you bring them out of water. Um, so each species does vary. You also have animal, or plants that have different habitats as well. Obviously a plant can't move, but they do need sources of sunlight, oxygen, carbon dioxide, um, fertile soil that will help feed them, different things like that. So there's a large variety. You can't just say, oh, this plant's going to feed all of these animals. It might feed a certain set of animals, but it's not going to feed every single animal. So you can kind of just examine what each animal requires in, in terms of a habitat and resources. So for my example to show you guys today, we're going to be talking about monarch butterflies, and I also have an example of painted lady butterflies. And so over here, you'll see that I have a habitat here. Um, it's made of glass. Typically, you do want some netting um, on the side, but I do have netting up top. Um, so the life cycle of a monarch butterfly is actually quite interesting. So they lay their eggs on the underneath of milkweed plants. And so I have a milkweed plant right here. Uh, so they typically hide it under. It protects it from um, any kind of rain or harsh sunlight going directly on that plant. But it also hides that plant, um, that egg away. So they'll put it on the underside of these plants. Or you can kind of see a little bit of where it flowers. They'll put it right, right in those buds um, just to kind of hide it and protect it. So monarchs do lay about 200 eggs um, per, per clutch. Um, usually not that many survive, so that is why they, they lay so many. They lay each egg one at a time, um, so it's a whole process, but uh, it's definitely worth it in order to see these, these species survive. Um, so when they hatch from their eggs, it takes about four to five days for being laid in order to hatch and become a caterpillar. A caterpillar is also known as a larvae, so they're in this larvae stage um, the caterpillar will exist in this stage between probably about two weeks. Um, and it depends on how much milkweed they can get their, their hands on um, and consume in that time. Um, they'll be teeny tiny and then you'll see that they get fatter and fatter as they eat more. When they get to the appropriate size, which takes approximately two weeks on average, um, they will go up to wherever they can find, whether it's the side of a building, um, benches, trees, anything like that, any kind of nice protective surface, they will go up, form their chrysalis, and that chrysalis is, is there for probably about 10 days, 
And so while it doesn't look like it's doing much, there's actually a huge metamorphosis going on in there. And so you have the caterpillar body and it kind of just goes all a little bit mushy and liquidy and it actually transforms into a beautiful butterfly. And so I have an example here. So this is, again, this is my habitat. They are climbing on the glass a little bit. much larger than that small one that's on the, on the glasses, I'm going to say. And I've actually just put this leaf in there about probably five, ten minutes ago, and you can see that they're already going to town on it. You can see what exactly they've eaten. So I'm going to carefully put them back down in here. I actually just got these guys this weekend when I went to purchase a milkweed plant. A very nice gentleman gave me a couple of these, and one was a very large one. I'm just so happy to turn into a chrysalis. I don't know if you guys can see that there. Um, and if you look closely, I'm going to carefully bring it around. If you look closely, you can see a small golden band right up there. And that's going to take him about 10 days to, to transform. So these guys are very sensitive to change, whether it's temperature, so you do need to be very careful when you do decide to raise these or take care of these. Um, you can plant milkweed plants out in your backyard and butterflies will come and lay their eggs naturally. Um, or you can also keep them in a habitat. However, um, as soon as those butterflies hatch, you need to give them time to dry their wings um, and then release them. We have a question. It says, where did you buy your milkweed plant? Um, I actually bought my milkweed plant from a very nice gentleman um, I actually found him on Facebook. He's part of one of the groups. Um, right now, he has one of uh, he has a whole bunch of plants in his backyard that he hopes to one day have his own greenhouse. Um, so it's just a local gentleman that grows grows this for fun right now. Um, but you can go to any local nurseries. Um, you can call ahead. Sometimes they'll post it online. Um, I know there's a couple around here. Um, I found a really nice one in Bikuniak Springs as well. Um, that sells a bunch of milkweed, and they actually have caterpillars on them right now. Um, so I would recommend going there. Uh, they might even have eggs on there as well. Um, you can buy milkweed from uh, big, big name stores. The only thing is, is you do have to be careful because a lot of those big name stores, while they're spraying all their plants with pesticides, they manage to get them on things like milkweed, and it can kill the caterpillars. Um, so. You don't really want that happening, so I would recommend, of course, buying and supporting local, um, but that's also going to give you more peace of mind that those plants haven't been sprayed with those pesticides. And you might have a couple other bugs on those plants as well, um, but you can get rid of those just by plucking them off or um, things like that. But you don't want to spray your plant with pesticides because it can kill them. Okay, so for our habitat here, I'm just going to put these back on just so that that lid doesn't come off. So these guys do poop a lot. You're going to need to make sure that you clean up that poop um, at least every two days, if not daily. And so this poop, I replaced their, uh, I cleaned out their cage yesterday, probably around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And this is how much poop that they've done since then, plus a little bit more that's in the bottom of the cage. You don't have to get every single piece. Um, but what it's doing on this paper towel is I actually take my milkweed and I put it on a damp paper towel. And so that keeps those uh, leaves from drying up while the caterpillars are eating them. Um, I put about six to eight leaves in yesterday and uh, by this morning they were all completely gone. They will eat not only the leaves but the stems of them as well. And so I just open these guys up. Let's be careful with that little guy. And so I'm gonna pluck a couple leaves from my milkweed plant, just larger ones that look like they're ready to go. And before you start plucking these, uh, you do want to make sure that you're looking for any eggs because you don't want to disturb the eggs. The 
want to make sure that if you do pick one with an egg, that you're properly caring for it. Um, you don't want to just um, pluck these and then give them to the caterpillars to eat. Um, I have checked this plant all over. Trust me, I wanted to show you guys an egg really bad, but I couldn't find one on this plant. Um, so I'm not too worried or concerned that I have them plucking an egg right now. And so I've got several leaves that I just put on top of here. And so in regards to habitats, this is their food source. This is their shelter. I'm gonna gently lift these guys back up. So their water source does come from those plants. Those plants actually um, are quite hydrated, and um, especially being on that paper towel, that's going to be where they get their source of water or hydration from. Um, I put this in there just to give them something to climb on. If they want to hang a uh, chrysalis on there, they can. But that's just a nice option for them there. And this little guy always likes to stay on the glass. He'll come down for food, but uh, he usually just hangs out. So monarchs, there is about 300 million um, produced each year, uh, and they travel from North America and Canada all the way down to Mexico um, for the Great Migration, and so um, they travel over 2,000 miles to get there. So they'll travel over all kinds of landscapes, um, mountains, rivers, uh, just different bodies of water in order to go there. What's really interesting about monarchs is that they uh, have four generations um, in a year. And so the ones that are in Mexico, they come up uh, during the beginning of the year, typically about February or March. Um, they go all the way up north, start laying their eggs. Um, after they've laid their eggs, they will die. And so uh, those eggs hatch, um, they go through their life cycle, they become a butterfly, and that butterfly does uh, exist for about between two to six weeks. Um, they do, in that time, are looking for a mate, and they lay their eggs, and again, they pass. And so that uh, generation there um, passes after two to six weeks. It goes through this whole cycle three more times, so three generations are only surviving for two to six weeks. Um, when it comes to that fourth generation, at the end of the year, winter is coming, um, they actually, that generation survives for between about six and eight months, I believe is what um, I saw. Um, it might be closer to six just because that's a really long time. Um, but that is the generation that goes down south, um, keeps warm during the winters that we get, and then flies back up and lays their eggs back up north. Um, so it is a natural cycle that they just go through their migration. It is ingrained in their bodies, um, but the fact that they know what time of year it is what generation they are, um, they, they respond, um, which I think is actually really, really cool. Um, so these guys are also poisonous to, uh, to any kind of predator that eats them. And so milkweed is poisonous. Um, we can get hurt from it if we consume a lot of it, but just touching it, you'll be okay. Um, so don't worry when you're, you're harvesting your milkweed to put in your plants. Um, it just, the, the, the caterpillars will consume it. It makes them taste really gross. It makes the birds that eat them really sick. That is why they are brightly colored. You might have noticed that they are yellow and black. Um, so that bright color is supposed to ward off any predators. Um, they continue to uh, eat off of milkweed. They will actually use the nectar from the flowering plants um, to eat. And those butterflies do remain poisonous. Um, so those birds uh, hopefully know not to even mess with the full-grown butterfly. Um, and so I do have another example here. So these guys are painted, uh, painted lady butterflies. And so you can kind of see them here. I've got five in this cup. So these guys I actually purchased off Amazon. I wasn't sure if I would be able to get my hands on some milkweed and monarchs um, to show you guys, but I ordered these guys probably about two weeks ago and it only took a week for them to come in. Um, so if you do go the Amazon route, they told me that it would get here sometime between Thursday and Monday, and it actually got here the Wednesday before. So just make sure that you have your habitat set up if you do decide to go and order online. Um, so you can usually purchase a butterfly net. These are usually recommended, um, especially for first time keepers. They're really nice and easy. Just make sure you don't have them in a spot where if you have
have a cat or a dog, they can knock it off just because these do collapse a bit. And so um, your animals could probably tear a hole in this netting. Um, that's why I had these guys at home so they're in the glass enclosure because I can just see my cats getting into them. So I have this, and a lot of them, they do vary a little bit. This one has a little velcro thing. Um, you can't just zip it up as well. Um, but that's going to keep your caterpillars in there. The smaller that your caterpillars are, the more likely they are to escape. There's something weird about them where the smaller ones just want to go everywhere. Um, so make sure that you're keeping an eye on them. Uh, but once these guys, these guys actually stay in this cup, um, this was part of the instructions, was to keep them in here because this is where their food is. They're also pooping in there and they're laying a lot of silk. They actually um, weave quite a bit of silk. This guy actually is kind of cool. You can kind of see him doing that right now. Um, just up in the air. He looks like he's walking on air, but he's actually weaving his own silk web there. And so these guys can... Um, they can fly up to 30 miles an hour. These are very widely distributed all over the world. Um, they're most well known for uh, doing their migrations all around Europe and going down and uh, migrating through Spain during the colder weather. Uh, these guys can fly above mountains. They've been found to fly over oceans. Um, and they're found all over the world. These guys do mainly feed on um, thistle. And so sometimes they're re referred to as thistle butterflies or because their wide distribution are also known as cosmopolitan butterflies. Um, so these guys are kind of cool as well. Let me grab a picture of what they look like when they're full grown. And so you guys might have seen these guys before. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but um, they're actually really pretty as well. And then I'll just show you a picture of the monarchs, just in case you've never seen it or didn't recognize that you have. So that's our monarch butterfly. That's the green caterpillars I'm showing you. So these guys are going to stay in here until they make their own chrysalis. Uh, there's actually a piece of material up in the lid that the company has put up there. Um, once these caterpillars have eaten enough food, they are going to go up to the top and make their own chrysalis, just like our monarchs did. Um, and so once they do that, I'll be able to remove the lid, carefully take off the piece of material that they have, and I can take a safety pin and put it on our enclosure for them. Um, so that'll be kind of cool to see uh, their transition. Um, so they also feed off of, like I said, thistle, the butterflies, the full-grown ones will feed off of nectar of those plants. Um, so these guys are kind of cool. They were much smaller than this when I did get them in. They were about that size, and now they're looking quite, quite chunky. Um, so I'm thinking that they'll probably go up there soon. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment on here. Um, but you can't order the painted ladies on Amazon. You can order the enclosures on Amazon. If you want to take this route, you can as well. Um, it seems that my butterflies weren't, my caterpillars weren't too deterred by the fact that I didn't have a net on the side. Um, but hopefully you guys find something that works for you. These guys are native to the area, so you don't have to worry about bringing in an invasive species. Um, but a lot of people will care for them. You can find groups on Facebook that'll give you tips and tricks. But other than that, uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, so we are still closed. We are hoping to open up next month. Uh, just keep an eye on our Facebook page just in case anything changes. But hopefully we'll see you guys soon, and I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks. Have a great day.